We welcome you to New England, just a few miles down the road from Boston. We're at the site for this year's NCAA Lacrosse Championship, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Fans have been tailgating for hours, wearing their colors proud, remembering the great players and great games of the past who have helped fuel the bitter rivalry in our first semifinal matchup between Virginia and Syracuse. Nine years ago, Virginia standout Connor Gill on the Cavaliers beat Syracuse in the NCAA Lacrosse Championship, claiming UVA's first national title since 1972. In 2002, it was Tawarton Award winner Mikey Powell and Syracuse returning the favor, beating the Cavaliers in double overtime as the Orange walked away with their eighth national championship. Then most recently in 2006, these two storied programs met once again on the national stage as part of semifinal Saturday. This time it was the Cavaliers who prevailed behind player of the year Matt Ward as he led UVA to the school's fourth NCAA title. We fast forward to the present and not much has changed. Both teams once again rich in talent, both teams with history on their side, and both teams as determined as ever to play for another title on Memorial Day. It's the semifinals of the 2008 NCAA Lacrosse Championship, and it's next. Program a year ago for their head coach, John Desco. Disaster, only five wins, but this year a 10-game win streak, and then success in the NCAA tournament. Crushing Canisius in the first round, hanging on last week against Notre Dame. The turnaround due to defense, goaltending, and face-offs, and some timely goals from some veterans. The key for Syracuse is that veteran leadership led by two-time captain Mike Lavelle, a 55-game point-scoring streak for him, truly their leader. And yeah, when you talk about a guy who is slick around the goal, I think Mike Lavelle's a guy who comes to mind, but his leadership is terrific this season. They were ranked 11th in the preseason. Lavelle said, that's not going to work for us, and he has rallied this team. Now, midfield scoring is their signature. Stephen Brooks, five game-winning goals this season. His outside shot is downright scary. And you see the theme for Syracuse, head, heart, and hustle on the back of Stephen Brooks' T-shirt. Let's talk about Virginia for their head coach, Dom Starge. A very good start to the year, 9-0. Some triple O Quinn in the ACC, losing to Maryland and a couple of games in the tournament to Duke, but close calls in the tournament. So far, they've hung on to get here to the semifinal. This is a team that's been living on the edge all season long. One goal win over UMBC, came back in overtime and beat Maryland in the quarterfinals. They have four overtime wins to their credit. They're just finding a way to win. And one of those last week at Navy against Maryland in the national quarterfinals, the game winner you just saw from Ben Rubio, he leads the Cavalier attack. Yeah, what is so impressive about Rubio, are fearless around the goal, loves to take that extra step, turns the corner to greatness, and generally gets dusted around the crease, but he is willing to sacrifice his body. Love this attack. You got Garrett Billings and Danny Gladding. Gladding could be the difference maker today. I don't think Syracuse has anyone who can cover him behind the goal. These two teams met once already this year, a thrilling 14-13 overtime win for Virginia. All four schools represented by fans here in Foxborough. Action, replays, a creative way for us to cover lacrosse here on ESPN and ESPN2. I have that all weekend long. Wait, let's check in with our Dick Sporting Goods. Key players to watch for this game today. The heavy hitters for Syracuse. Mike Lavelle so impressed with his accuracy at the walkthrough yesterday. Stephen Brooks shoots the rock more than 100 miles an hour. And Dan Hardy is hot right now. Had a huge game against Notre Dame. Rubio has been doing it for four years. Gladding, I think, has matchup superiority. And Ken Clausen, the defender, he will draw Mike Lavelle in his matchup. Let's meet the starting goaltenders. It's John Galloway for Syracuse, a freshman who won a state championship for West Genesee High School, playing for the legendary head coach there, Mike Masser. The same high school John Desco, as head coach, attended in the 1970s. He was head-to-head -head with Bud Petit, his polar opposite in terms of experience. Petit, a fifth-year senior in his first-ever championship weekend start. And look, he only has seven starts, making his eighth today. Today's broadcast on ESPN2, also available on ESPN2 HD. Three on-field officials today, Kevin O'Leary, Brian Abbott, Tom Holohan, are Mike for sound. Okay, fellas, listen up now, all right? When you come down, I want you to come down, stick straight up and down, ball in the middle of your sticks, all right? Nothing touching the white line. Fellas, let us blow the whistle and you decide it, not let us decide it, okay? Ready? Ready? Down. Right on the top. 
And the 2008 championship weekend is underway. First time ever played here in Foxborough, Syracuse, led by Danny Brennan. When head-to-head -head with Garanitz, has the first possession. Matt Abbott's first shot stopped by Bud Petit. Right off the hop, Petit is tested. And here comes Matt Kelly for Virginia Long Stick from just outside Chicago. Cavaliers will have their first half field offensive set. Peter Lomity, the Duke transfer, let's bring it to the offensive end. It was gladding behind the cage for Ben Rubier. Still has that heavy wrap on the right knee. Dislocated his kneecap. Start of the season, did it a couple times last year. Tells us, though, finally he's pain free. Couple keys for the Cavaliers, midfield defense. You've got to cover Dan Hardy and Steven Brooks. And then face-offs. Aim for 50% with Garrett Ince. You're going against the number one face-off specialist in the nation in Danny Brennan. First turnover of the game is Shamel Bratton's pass to Danny Gladding is errant. Tom Starge, the head coach, last won the title in 2006. And the Cavalier team went undefeated, led by Matt Ward. Here's Hardy charging in. Dan Hardy, 22, taking that legendary number at Syracuse. Back right, point, and a hat point. trick. Last week, 11-9 victory for the Orange over Notre Dame in the national quarterfinals. A game held in Ithaca, New York at Cornell. Ryan Nislik all over Greg Narosky. Greg, one of three players from Watertown, New York, just south of the Canadian border, north of Syracuse, and they're all related. His cousin, Brendan Loftus, passes back to Kenny Nims. Those are the three from Watertown. And all our cousins. A couple Syracuse keys. Win the goaltending matchup. Two guys who have never played on this stage before. And then defend the known. And that's Danny Gladding and Ben Rubior, number nine and six for Virginia. Loftus right hand cradle. Syracuse looking for its second shot of the day. First came from Matt Abbott. Nims goal line extended. His dad, Tom. He's part of the 83 National Championship at Syracuse. First ever won by the Orange. They've won nine in all. Brooks a shot. Stopped by Petit. Early, but Petit looks sharp. Denies Stephen Brooks. Here comes Nizalik, the freshman defender. An outlet for Max Pumper. And Virginia effective on the clear. Virginia choosing to short stick Stephen Brooks. And I believe I Brooks you. will have isolation success against Will Barrow. Will Barrow, the captain, number 23 in White, heads off for an offensive-minded player. He is a senior captain from Long Island. Is Ruby or another captain for UVA? What a great career he's had. Lomity gets the return pass. Peter, the transfer from Duke, one of the fifth-year players, could have had another season at Duke, opted to transfer instead. Into a different graduate program at UVA. His brother Ted, a great player at Virginia as well. Peter can't practice, Dom Starger tells us, because of a hip problem. Really been bothering him all year. Ruby behind the cage, watched by Sid Smith. Sid from the Six Nations. Iroquois Indian Nation in Canada. And a great player on defense for Syracuse this year. Jamel Bratton scores! What a start for the fabulous brush. Chanel Breton, the top high school recruit out of Long Island last year, gives UVA the 1 0 lead. Long possession by Virginia, kind of just testing the waters in terms of matchups. Bratton, the freshman, going against Brooks, the veteran. Bratton has the most dynamic stop and pop quickness, the ballistic quickness where he can fake to the right, come back to the left, that I've seen from a young player in decades. 14 goals this season. And he has lived up to the hype. He and his twin brother, Rommel, tremendous athletes out of Long Island, football, basketball, and lacrosse stars. Could have had scholarships in any sport, but opted to stick with a lax. And in his first ever semifinal game, Jamel Bratton, the icebreaker for Virginia. Here's Kenny Nims behind the cage, watched by Matt Kelly. Kelly was a great running back in the Chicago area, recruited by the likes of Illinois. One, when you get time. Wisconsin, several Big Ten schools. A lot of Max schools wanted him as a fullback. 
He has become a great defender for Virginia. Nim's swim move, goal line extended. First matchup, as we told you, these two teams went to UVA in overtime. That was way back on March 1st, NNC Bank Stadium. 14-13 in Baltimore. Squeeze, squeeze Clearly here, but Team together! The Virginia goalie communicating with his defense here. Clawson and Lavelle going head to head. We spoke to Matt Donowski at Duke. He said, Clawson is as good a cover guy as he faced all year. He'd rate him up there. Let's with go, Jerry let's go. Lamb of Come Georgetown. On, let's go. Pat Parrott shot. Stick deflected on the release. Goes over the crossbar. Parrott the junior from Long Island. A brother who's won a national championship. Not one, but two. His brother Bill on the 2002 Syracuse championship teams. And Pat told us yesterday, last summer they went to a wedding. And Bill said, well, I got these two championship rings. Pat, want to wear one? Pat said, no, I'm going to earn my own. We'll try to do that this weekend. Abbott. Dad Tom played at Syracuse. Now a lacrosse official. His grandfather played at Syracuse, too. Great tradition. Javon Miller, the freshman. Here is Parrott again. Scored last week. Key goal in the fourth quarter rally for Syracuse against Notre Dame. The Orange got stormed by the Irish in the third quarter. Outscored 6-1. LaBelle spin scores. The senior leader, we told you about Mike Lavelle. Gotcha. 56 straight games with at least one point. Tempo of this game much slower than we imagined. Lavelle with the question mark move. Watch him dodge from behind against Kelly. Plant turned to the outside and fire that ball far post. Question mark because it looks like one. His path looks like a question mark. Left handed. Switches hands, play it up, play perfect it accuracy. Earn. Brennan wins the faceoff, the leading faceoff man in the nation, number 40 in orange, recovering from an injured hamstring. Danny Brennan, nearly 68% of his draws won. He's taken all three so far in the faceoffs this year against Garrett Ince. Ince only a freshman from Ontario, Canada. The faceoff disparity in this game might ultimately be the difference. Brennan, the best in the country. Virginia has struggled in big games this year, winning faceoffs. Brooks tries a crossover move, face dodge, had it stripped. Max Popper, good play. Anyone's ball. Steven Brooks regains for Syracuse. On his stick is BBB. Stands for his mother, who passed away from cancer. When Steven was in high school, Barbara Baldwin Brooks. Charging in, shooting, scoring. Brendan Loftus. Goes high on Petit. And part of the Watertown connection has his 18th of the year. The importance of face-offs, extra possessions. Loftus down the left-handed alley. Virginia slow to slide and with a severe angle. This will give you a good view as to the accuracy. Look at that, gorgeous. There's about a three-inch spot over the shoulder of Bud Petit. Face-off violation goes against Brennan. New rule and calls across this year. Quick six on five. Tim with a long stick charging in. A brief break for the team that has the violation put against it. Procedure call in lacrosse this year. We almost saw a good advantage there for Mike Timms with a six-foot pole, but instead, the Cavaliers set their half-field offense. First time they've trailed today. Orange have the advantage in shots early, 6-1. Chevelle Bratton tallied for the Cavaliers. Little shot numbers for Syracuse. Lobel and Loftus back to back. Puts the orange on top. Danny Gladding from X right behind the goal. Watched by Kyle Guadagnolo playing today with a heavy heart. We'll tell you a story. He fell in the net. Gladding trying to go short side. Stopped by Galloway. Smothers the ball in the safety of his crease. And a good break for Syracuse. Guadagnol, the defender, actually tripped on the net and fell. Kyle Guadagnol playing today in memory of his brother Aaron, a former Syracuse player who tragically was killed Tuesday night. 
in Elbridge, New York, just outside Syracuse, where the Guadagnolo family lives. That pass broken up. Tim's regains his barrel. Full head of steam. Runs into Smith, though. Good play, Sid Smith, with a long stick. The stop barrel. Who keeps going with a swim move? What about a little barrel charging in? Shoots! What an effort, Will Barrow! Incredible. You got to take the body if you're going to get the ball out of these modern sticks. Watch the traffic around number 23, Will Barrow. Three, four, five, six guys he goes through. Barrow, a terrific high school running back wide receiver type recruited by the University of Maryland to play football, is considering playing football at Virginia next year for Al Groh. He spoke with Will this week. He's had meetings with Al Groh, the head football coach at Virginia, and he's considering no, no, just no. that. He, no, 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 no. A great leader on the lacrosse field out of Long Island. What a move by Barrow. How did he get by all the defenders? Spectacular play. Well. That was... He's a short stick defensive midfielder, not known for the offense. Lennon wins the draw, goes backwards to his goaltender. There's Guadagnolo, trouble with the handle toward the sideline, and apparently keeps it in. And they've got 20 seconds to bring it across the midfield line. Syracuse must hurry here. Devon Miller, the freshman, gets it off to Tyler Hawati. Now to the box, another 10 seconds after it's across midfield. They do that, barely. And the clear complete. Excellent clear. You don't want to panic. You have to have that invisible clock in your brain, 20 seconds. How close are we? Do I need to heave the ball, or do I have time to make the correct pass? Smart play by Guadagnola. He didn't panic. Got to wonder how Kyle is doing. He and his brother Tom are on the Syracuse team. They lost their brother Aaron, as we told you, in an accident this past week. There's a T-shirt on the sidelines. Signs called the Guad Squad for the Guadagnola family. The Syracuse team wearing stickers on the backs of their helmets. AG in memory of Aaron, who was a member of the team in 2006. Stephen Brooks works behind the cage for Lavelle. Four goals so far today, all unassisted. Lavelle, quick stick try, Patia save. What a stop on Noroski. Ball loose, Hardy will try to track it down, does so for Syracuse. But his pass is errant. Anyone's ball. Lavelle grabs it. Mike Lavelle, great hands. Passing in front, Nims, save Patia, what a stop. Three saves early, but Petit. Rebound. Grab back by Noroski, and Syracuse resets. Petit has been incredible early on. Here's Brooks. The left-hand shot sends it wide. Backed up Lavelle. Orange keeps it half-field offense. Action is furious. Lavelle, a pass. Brooks, who is normally left-handed, missed the cage by a wide margin. Steven told us this week he has the fastest shot for his head coach, John Desco. Brooks shoots at 105 miles an hour. John Desco, 21 and 5 in the NCAA tournament, 8 and 0 Quint in quarterfinal games. After hanging on last week against Notre Dame at Cornell, three national titles. The last came in 04. Lavelle again, right-handed shot. Pike off the iron. Mike Thompson grabs it for Virginia. And the onslaught for Syracuse. Just, I, was gonna, I was gonna use that exact word, Dave. That possession was an onslaught. Big, big shots, a lot of opportunities. Here's Max Popper and scores! The freshman! With a penalty flag down against Syracuse and Hardy. Oh, Bud Petit and right, the Virginia the defense weather the storm at the other end another goal from a defensive midfielder earlier it was barrow carrying the ball in this time it's pomper max pomper a hero from a week ago against maryland came up with a huge ground ball in overtime dave today he does it on the offensive end and a sophomore from huntington long island played a lot of offensive midfield in fall ball Procedure call this time it's against Garrett Ince and Virginia, so Syracuse gets it. Then a penalty flag flies. Might have a call here on Brennan. I think Danny Brennan said somebody to the official Quinn on the way off. If so, unsportsmanlike. Let's see the call. Delay of game, maybe.
Wait! Wait! 30 seconds, Jones. Yep. 30 second delay of game. That's a 30 second delay of game, Dan, because it's after the illegal procedure, you must just leave the ball there. And Ince, in their estimation, rolled the ball away from Danny Brennan. I saw Brennan look back and say something to the official, but the, as we see the officials, 30. Kevin O'Leary, Brian Abbott, 30 delay. Tom Holden as well. Kevin O'Leary is our referee. Okay, go ahead. Brian the umpire, and Tom is our field judge. So we have a 30-second technical call against Virginia. First EMO, extra man opportunity for the Orange in this game. It's only 30 seconds long. Syracuse was 4 of 4 when they met Virginia the first time back on March 1st in Baltimore with the man up. We'll see what happens here today. Buddy works, Lavelle. Watch Chris. Loftus passing for Nips. Here's Mike Lavelle. Had a Keo cutting, looked for the slam dunk to Nims, broke up Petit. Got in the way of that, then launches the long outlet pass. Anyone's ball at midfield. Rubier lost it to Sid Smith, taken back by Hardy. Penalty releases. Brendan Loftus, We're back to six on six lacrosse. Loftus, one of the two scored by Syracuse, along with Mike Lavelle. Shamel Bratton and two unlikely heroes. Defensive midfielders, Will Barrow, Max Pomp, who don't normally get offensive chances, have tally for Virginia. On March 1st, when these two teams met in Baltimore, Virginia had nine different players score. Swim move, Nims. Backs in on Nizelik. Somehow hangs on to the ball. What an effort for Kenny Nims. He's the team's second leading scorer behind Mike Lavelle. Orange half field attack. One of the reasons Syracuse goals against has dropped from about 10 goals a game last year down to seven this year. Long offensive possessions. They're just not playing very much defense this season. Team's hardest shot. Here he is. Steven Brooks, swim move. Trying to get free. Watched by Kelly. Passing in front. Good feed. Nims. Double team slammed. Ball dislodged. They tried that little slam dunk Wait, play a couple of times. Blood. You got to go with that blood. 22's got to go with the blood. 22's got to go with the blood. Dan Hardy being told he's got to leave the field hey, because line. of blood. That is visible to the official, so we'll have to get that take taken care of, of by the B. Syracuse trainer. Step out, step outside. Out out Cardi's father and brother played at Syracuse. Brother has a national championship ring. He told us yesterday, here's constantly about the fact that he doesn't have one yet. Maybe this is his chance. Wearing the legendary number 22 at Syracuse. Back right. Won by some Squeeze great up. players. Some Back of the best right. in lacrosse right. history. Easy in here. Kelly tries the poke check on Nims. Goal line extended with a right hand cradle. Kenny Nims feeding. Ball lost briefly. Grab back by Back Stephen right. Brooks. Watch right. Watch Easy. it. Here's Stephen Keogh, freshman from Seven. Toronto. Seven. Seven. And several Canadian players will have a big impact at this year's championship weekend. This is the matchup that Syracuse likes, Brooks against Barrow. But a little too much standing around off ball for Syracuse. The best way to attack Virginia Watch is to ball move ball. off ball. Watch the ball, ball. Double ball, ball. Here's Matt Double Abbott. Ball, ball. It's a Nottingham High School in the city of Syracuse. Third generation orange player. And perhaps one of the most valuable. Keo, stall warning in effect. Officials have told him they've got to keep the ball in the box. Shot. Ripped wide by Stephen Keogh, the freshman, backed up by Abbott. Syracuse hangs on. If the ball goes outside the white line with that stall warning in effect, which it is now, Syracuse loses it to Virginia. Shots don't count. Abbott, left hand cradle from behind the cage. Brooks, got that big shot. Hasn't unleashed it yet, though, at least with the left hand. That's where he's most valuable. Spin move in front. Keo couldn't tee it up on the quick stick. Ball's lost. Keo spins, fires. What a save, Petit. Ball loose again. And picked up by Ken Clausen. Five saves early for Bud Petit, who's been the MVP here. He has. Cavaliers. Keo, that pickup was just magical. The way he was able to get that ball off the carpet, back up into a shooting space, and then the release. But Petit, the difference maker. Here's Tims with a long stick. Will another defensive player score? No, he's de-sticked from behind. Big play, Sid Smith. 
Outlet for Brooks. Here comes Syracuse.